Been a long time since we've been in here, huh? You guys stayed out the rain. <laughs> You're good. I had to joke with that, but. <laughs> Obviously, you got a core of this team back from you know these last couple of years, but it's still I think roughly what 18 new players on this team. What have you learned about this group of guys that just watching over over training camp? Well, the core and our base is really still here. Uh, it's unusual to get everybody back like we did in past years. That's very unusual. So it's normally like this where you got new guys where you're inserting them in certain spots. But we love the core that we have, and we love the guys that are in them new spots. So it's getting everyone acclimated to our way of ball. They've come in and did an excellent job of that, of having awareness of what we're trying to get accomplished day in and day out. So they do an excellent job of it. Uh, we just like where they're at right now. What does it do? You've got a quarterback and you've seen Tom. When you add a player like Julio Jones, you know, who has come out here and looked like Julio Jones, right? Mm -hmm. What does that do to, to him, to the group, to, to everybody in terms of like, you know, now here's another guy that is still doing it? I mean, you want to have as many players as possible, right? Anytime you go out on the grass, you want to have as many players as possible. Obviously, Julio gives you matchup issues, but we're just working right now. We're just working right now. We love what we got here. We love the group. I love the mentality of this group, really. I tell you guys all the time, I love working with this group. This group comes to work every day. So we're excited to get the season started. Uh, we're not going to assume anything. We're just going to get to work, and that's what we've been doing, getting to work, trying to get ourselves ready to roll for Sunday nobody, night. Nobody was complacent last year, right, but you brought the whole group back and you had a bunch of injuries and things, and we know what happened. Is it good to kind of have more hunger added to the team like this each year? You've got guys that look, they're, you know, you're all about the ring. They're all about a ring. Rick, I think this has always been a hungry team, really. We, I think we were more hungry. We were hungry last year, too. It's just when you don't win, yeah. it don't mean that you wasn't hungry. So. This group has been that way. Like I said, this group come to work every day. They come to work. Whatever we ask of them as coaches, whatever we think that the game plan got to be for us to get the job done that week, they come ready to prepare that week for that and try to get it done on Sunday. So that's what you appreciate about this group. This group come to work. We don't have to get on these guys about showing up, coming to practice with the understanding of how important practice is. They understand that. Byron, how is your uh, tight end room evolved during camp? And could all four of those guys conceivably have some kind of role? Uh, have, have the rookies evolved to that point? We'll see. We'll see. It, it, it's, it is somewhat different not having Grunk, right? But we'll see. These guys have come in. Our young guys have come in and done an excellent job from a preparation standpoint of understanding what to do. Obviously, they'll get their first taste of the NFL Sunday night, but we we like what they've done this really this off season. So we'll see how it work out. Who's you know what roles everybody take, but I like what they've done put on tape so far. I like the work that they've put in really all summer. This offense, your quarterback led the league in passing yards and touchdowns last year, and yet you want to improve. What are the specific areas where you think this offense can take a step forward from last year? Uh, I, w I don't want to get into specifics because it's things that we talk about behind closed doors, but obviously we can be better. Obviously we can be better. Uh, we feel as though we can be better. Uh, there's been a lot of games that we played that we knew we left plays out there, so we just want to be more consistent, really. More consistent at whatever we're doing, running, passing, whatever element of the game, situational football, we just want to be more consistent at it, and I know we can do that. Uh, the tape from last year tells us that we can actually get that. Uh, we, sh we need to do that, so we're just trying to get that accomplished. I'm sorry if this was already asked. I was, I was in the ladies' room when you guys started. Um, how much, if anything, did... Were you guys, did you guys miss of, of kind of that, that chemistry building between Tom and, and Julio Jones? Given Tom's absence and then, you know, Julio takes days off as well. These are veteran guys that's played a lot of football. Both of those guys going to have on gold jackets. So it took these guys two, three days to get acclimated <laughs> when they were here. So that's, and then it's verbal and it's some of it's physical. Some of it you need to be on the grass for. Some of it you don't. It's just really communication back and forth. 
about how things going to really be operated. So I think they're in a good spot. I think they fine. I don't think we missed anything in those 11 days. And, and Julio, you know, was dealing with a hamstring injury much of last year. Obviously, it's a new season, but he is an older player, like you mentioned, and sometimes older players need to be on, on a little bit more of a, a snap count or, or just having those things monitored. Have you guys figured out something that, that will work from a workload standpoint for Julio? We're going to play. <laughs> We're going to play. We'll know what that really consists of, but we're going out ready to play. Uh, Rashad White was named number two running back. Um, what do you envision his role being on game days? Is he kind of that third down back with Lenny not coming off the field as, as much? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Obviously, he will have a role. It's week one. Obviously, he came in and had a heck of a camp, a hell of a camp. He's a real adult kid. He's a, he's a rookie, but he act like he's been in this league before. So we'll see with his role as the year go on. His role is show itself, but right now we're just ready to play. We're just ready to go out and play, try to execute, try to find a way to win a football game Sunday night. You're gonna miss uh, you're gonna miss Gronk more as a as a red zone target, or, or as a run blocker, or equally both. I miss the human being more than anything, right? <laughs> I tell you guys about that all the time. It's this is a unique guy that, to have an opportunity to coach a guy like Gronk was special. The way he viewed life, the way he viewed football, I always tell you guys, I wish I can view life the way he did. I don't think Grunk ever had a bad day. And obviously we'll miss his presence on the field, but I think what made Grunk so special is his presence in the locker room and the way his teammates feel about him and the way he deal with his teammates. Right. Me personally, that's what I miss the most. Sorry to cut you off. Right. You always talk about having confidence in everybody that goes that takes the field for you. but. The interior offensive line, from, from outside, a lot of people are concerned about the inexperience there. What what gives you the confidence in, in, in Gedeke and Hainsey and even the backups behind them? I'm around these guys every day, and I don't just say that. You guys have seen me in this situation. I really live that. I think it's a lot of good football players in this league. Sometimes you guys have no idea about that because you don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis like we do. Uh, I trust anybody in that huddle. So who's ever in that huddle, I'll have the ultimate trust in them that they can get the job done. Obviously, you know, it's hard to replace a Ryan Jensen, right? You're talking about an all-pro, pro bowl center. But we got confidence in the guys that will be in there, and we live by that. I really live by that. I really believe in that. It's an opportunity for some young guys to get an opportunity to play significant snaps, and we'll see. Are you What's expecting the teams to attack that please? position? So are you expecting teams to attack that position to kind of test you early to see if these guys are are capable of handling it? Uh, we're just preparing. We're just preparing for everything. So we're preparing for everything, and we'll see what happens. You mentioned, uh, you know, that you miss Gronk the person. When you have a, a personality like that, you know, that such a unique personality, and every guy that, that's out there brings a different energy to the group. Like, like how do you replace that, that type of vibe and, and that energy? Like, it seemed like... You know, during some of the tougher practices, yes, he's worked hard, but, but he would also lift the spirits of guys around him. Like, how, how do you feel that kind of way? The, the thing is, with football players and football teams and coaches, it's never really the same. So, like I told you guys, for us to have the same team, I think, two years in a row, that's very unusual. So we expect that. You know, people that's involved every day, they kind of expect that. And that's kind of part of football, really. That's part of football. We just we love who we have here, though. We love who we have here. It's just Grunk's a unique guy, especially personally, right? Who he is as a person. But that's that happens every year. That's part of the game, playing the game of football. Huddle. I mean, locker rooms are different, really, every every year. So you just have to adjust and move on. All right, what are some of the biggest matchup problems that the Cowboys have have presented to you watching the film? Well, the film is the film. Obviously, uh, we'll see. We'll have to see, really. We're preparing for everything. We're not really into – we're just getting ready. We're just getting ready to play, try to play our best football that we can play, understand we're playing a great opponent, understand they got great players on all three levels of their defense. So we're just trying to get prepared. We're not really focused on one guy. We're trying to focus on the good group that they have. We understand what type of group they have. So we're just trying to make sure we're getting ready to roll. Okay, thank you, Thomas. I know.
Hey guys, how you doing? Tom, you, you play with a lot of players, right? Every year the team's different and all that. When you have a guy like Julio Jones that has sort of the resume he has, is it invigorating? Is it does it you know obviously excite you? What what does it do for for the group? Yeah, he's a uh, obviously he's a great player, but um, I think he's a great teammate too. You know, you just sense that he's here for all the right reasons and. Uh, just been really fun to get to know. Obviously, I've watched him for a long time. Obviously, admired his ability to play and play at a high level. And uh, you know, I've been on the other sideline watching him. You know, be a dynamic player. So, um, just been always enjoyable to get to know different guys. And he's one of the one of the great players in the league. So to add him to you know that receiver room of of uh, Chris, Mike, and. Um, you know Russ and BP and Scotty. It's there's a lot of a uh, lot of good experience in there. A lot of good football players. A lot of great teammates. What about Russell, Russell Gage being new and uh, has he been a surprise to you? Has he been? What about him? Yeah, Russ tr has has worked hard. He's had a few little uh, kind of bumps and bruises that's kind of uh, kept him from being out there as much as we'd like. But you know, the more we can get him involved and understand what he's really capable of as a player. And the more we'll use him in those situations. So he's done a good job. He's a very physically gifted player, and it's just us being on the same page. And that's one thing where you feel like, uh, you know, everything kind of goes to plan. It's another when things get off schedule, and, you know, that's where you got to, you know, really put the work in. It's easy when things go exactly the way you want, but when they don't, you got to figure out, you know, how to read each other a, a certain way. So we're working through all that. Tom, what have you seen from on the Cowboys? What sticks out to you? They're a good football team. Uh, they have a lot of dynamic players in the pass rush at linebacker. In the secondary, Trevon's a, a great player. Uh, led the league in interceptions last year. Mike is a hell of a player. Um, all over the field, they line up at linebacker, defensive end. He rushes a lot, covers well. Uh, DeMarcus Lawrence is a great player. Um, so they, they rush the passer. I think they have a good scheme. They mix things up quite a bit. We're playing them at home. They've got a very good offense. So they're a tough team to beat. And, um, you know, it's going to be a big challenge for the opener. Tom, you mentioned Micah, and uh, I don't know if you saw the quote, but he had a funny quote about you being a competitor and said that you want to step on people's throat like they're a roach. Um, I'm wondering, in, in all your <laughs> years of um, quotes where guys have admired you, what you thought of that analysis from Micah? Oh, man, that's interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I just try to go win. So at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to hurt anyone just trying to go out there and do my job as best I can but I'm going out there with a lot of good players that's the best part for me as a competitor and going to compete is going with a group of teammates you really believe in so it's not one player they're dealing with they're dealing with all of us and you know the more we can communicate the more we can be on the same page the more we can play together as a team I think we're the, the tough we are to beat I understand you've been providing members of your offensive line some clippings maybe even some articles from folks in this room about things that have been said about them, saying, I hope you guys take this to heart. How have they been responding to Good. That? Really good. Really good. It's a, it's a hard, tough, hard-nosed group. So those guys are, um, you know, really take every bit of challenge and, and use it as motivation. So they're, um, they take things to heart. Thomas, you've the had, oldest team in the league right now. Obviously, the core is back. You've been here for, for two years with a lot of these guys. Is it overblown, the fact that uh, there's so many veteran days off, you had a, a period in the middle of training camp? Is that part overblown that you guys didn't really need that time to, to kind of get on the same page? No, I think, you know, the more you do something, the better you're going to be at it. So I think, you know, you, you do the best you can do and try to practice and be there for the team. And um, we have veterans and... You know, I think the coach has done a good job. Coach Bull's done a great job of managing practice and rest and making sure our bodies are fresh and our minds are fresh and, and go out there and, and, you know, go play great football. Tom, what have you seen from your refurbished tight end room? And do you think by committee they can compensate from what you've lost there? You know, it's, it's uh, Gronk's one of the all time great players in the league. I don't think you just put, a, put together, you know, a team and think that you're just going to. You know, there's another Gronk out there. There's only one. But, you know, the guys that are in there, we drafted a few, brought in a, you know, Kyle's a free agent. Cam's done a great job with his leadership. So, you know, it's really a unit. It's not one player. It's it's a bunch of different players. You'd much rather play with a guy like Gronk than not, but he's not here. So, um, you know, we just, gotta, we just have to do other things and play to the strengths of the players that we have and not 
think that they were the strengths last year, but reestablish those things. And this is what football's all about. And the season isn't going to go like it went last year for anybody. You know, it's not the reality. You have to deal with where you are in the moment and deal with the challenges that you face. And certain guys aren't here. Certain guys are going to get hurt. Something, you know, things are going to happen to teams. And it's a long marathon. And we're not even at the at the starting gate yet. So, you know, we got to obviously put our week of practice in, be prepared, go on the road against a good team. It's a big challenge. You know, we'll go with the guys that are active for the game, we'll put together a good plan that can hopefully play to our strengths and, and attack their weaknesses. Tom, you're 45, Tom. You're 45. You're not on the contract for next year. <laughs> do the thoughts ever creep in, Tom? Uh, this might be my last time around. Uh, how do you keep those thoughts out of your head? I think we're all getting one day older at a time. So, you know, we're all not sure whether we're going to be here next year or not. You know, this is a reality for every player, every coach, every parent. Um, you know, you just never know. So we should all take advantage of the opportunity that we have, which is the one we have in front of us now. Tom, speaking of Gronk, you know, his agent recently reiterated he doesn't think he's done. You recently challenged him to rise like a phoenix, <laughs> recaptured his glory. Do you get a sense from talking yeah. to him that that itch is still there? I, I mean, I know how difficult it was for you to, to leave and have to come back to so that itch that with the season starting, watching some football games, do you get a sense that potentially? I don't, I don't want to talk about Gronk every week at the end of the day for him. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he makes his decision. We're going to go out there and play football, and we're going to try to do a great job. So regardless who's out there, whether that's, Gronk at that position, which it's not this year. You know, the other, other guys are going to go do a great job. Rashad White, what have you seen out of him uh, as a running back in this offense? What do you think his role could be? He's been really impressive. You know, it's now it's now it really matters. So this is where you got to go see what you're all about. And and I think the guys that you know do well in this league, you know, go from being really an amateur to being a professional. And when you're an amateur in college, well, I guess they're not amateurs anymore. So they're getting paid, but. <laughs> There's a different level of commitment at a professional level. And when you're, this is your job and you're required to show up every day and do it. You know, we play 20 plus games a year. That's very different. And it's a lot of physical preparation. There's a lot of mental, um, mental work you need to do to maximize your opportunity. And, and emotionally, you've got to be in a good place. So, you know, it's, he's a good young player. You know, he's got to establish it every day. He's got to gain the trust of the teammates and the coaches in order for him to you know, be confident, for us to be confident in him, for him to be confident out there on the field. But he's worked really hard, put himself in a good position, and, and we'll see how he does Sunday night. Tom, uh, Kevin behind me mentioned the 11-day the break that you took. And none of us can really relate to what it's like to, have, to be living under a microscope, right? How do you navigate when the conversation and the speculation starts shifting to like your, your personal life? How do you handle that? How do you deal with that? It's been like that for a long time for me, so you know I know how to try to do my best, and, and I'm professional to show up every day and do my job the best best way I can, obviously. Tom, what have you seen from Chris Godwin when you've been practicing with him? He's done a great job. I mean, he has a significant injury he's faced, um, and it was a big hurdle for him to overcome. You know, his um, you know that rehab is really tough. You know, someone who's been through a torn ACL and a contact ACL, it's a very difficult injury, but took it head on and. Um, he's doing. He's done a great job. So we'll see how. I, I, Chris is a guy to talk about. You know, take advantage of your opportunity. He, Chris has done that. He's a great professional. He's a great leader. Um, always here to you know bring a positive energy to what he's doing. He's very talented. I mean, outside of his skill set, I think his attitude is what makes him such a great player and a great teammate. Tom, you talk about confidence. confidence. How much confidence do you have in this group? going into the season and you've been around them for, for a while now to, to see what kind of talent is here. I've always been very confident in our team, you know, from the day that I got here. So that hasn't changed at all. But we still got to go do it. It doesn't matter. You still got to go out there and you got to execute under pressure, which is, you know, that's when the fans are watching and the TV's turned on. You got to go out there and do a great job. Tom, you've had a lot of success over the years with young offensive linemen in front of you. I just want to ask you about Luke and Robert and what they've done to, to earn your trust already. I think you know, showing up every day and, you know, not making the mental errors and, uh, you know, taking things to heart, you know, when things don't go well for them, you know, not blaming other people for the mistakes and, um, you know, learning from the mistakes and, and improving, you know, and showing everybody that you really care about what you're doing. You care about what we're trying to accomplish and you care about, you know, the role that you're in. You care about the fact that your teammates and your coaches put you in a position where they feel like they could trust you. So you know, that's what you like about young players, that it means a lot to them. They want to show up and do a great job for everyone because football is a dangerous sport. 
you know, if they don't do a great job, they put other people at risk. And if you don't know what you're doing, you know, it could be dangerous for the backs and for the quarterback and vice versa. You know, no one wants to be hung out to dry. So we're all out there together. We're all trying to protect each other. And the more that you feel like guys know what to do and they care about what they're doing, I think you, you gain more trust in them. Tom, you put your season ticket out for autograph today. What's, what's it, that venture been like going down a different path from what you've done in the past? It's been great. It's been, I've obviously enjoyed, you know, I have a lot of kind of off field pursuits, but you know, now it's football season. So I think for me, just focused on this week, um, you know, I let them at autograph focus on their job and I'm focusing on mine, which is playing quarterback to the best of my ability. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tom.